All right, let's look at a scenario uh, that would involve the law of cosines. Okay, so um, here's this triangle. I'm going to try to draw this a little bit bigger. Um, we've got one angle, two sides. Okay, labeling these things, we can't just do this willy-nilly. We need to make sure that we're labeling these angles and sides appropriately. So I'll call this, this will be angle C. It's 15 degrees, obviously. I'm not drawn to scale here. This is side C. I don't know side C. No, it doesn't matter which one of these we label as A or B. Okay, but we, we don't know angle A. We know the side opposite is 20. We don't know angle B, but we know the side opposite is 15. So based on the information that's given here, we would say that this is a side angle side relationship, right? And when we talk about side angle side, sorry, when we talk about side angle side, the angle is formed by the two sides that we know. We call that the included angle, right? So these two sides form this angle. That's different from the side side angle relationship or from the ambiguous case, right? The ambiguous case uh, we have an angle that's not the included angle. That would mean I'd know this side. Totally different situation. Gives us all those different possibilities for the solutions. Not so here. Now, remember what we what we said about the law of cosines. There, there's really only one relationship for the law of cosines, but there's six different ways to write it. What matters when you're given side angle side is the angle that you know is going to be the angle, and I'm going to start by writing this over here, that has to be the angle that we use when we write out the law of cosines. And remember that what we talked about before, where whatever angle this is, the side that's opposite that is the isolated variable over here. So that's why C squared is going to be here. I know angle C goes here, so side C is all by itself on this side, which means the other two sides which I know I can put in this space, okay? And then I'm just filling out the rest of this formula with these values here. Now, if you'll notice the way that this problem is set up, we have C squared, because we're solving this triangle. We're, we wanna know all the sides and all the angles. We have C squared over here. None of these are variables, okay? So this entire calculation, if you want, you can plug this into your calculator or into Desmos exactly how you see it to get the value of C. And I think I'm going to do that here. So I've got 15 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 15 times 20 times the cosine of 15 sure we're in degree mode here, right? Okay, because notice the difference. If I'm in radian mode, it's 1,080. If I'm in degree mode, which is what I should be in, getting 45.4. Okay, so we have 45.4, which let's make sure that we have this set up. Okay, and so this is C squared. So C squared is equal to this calculation, which was 45.4445. So 45, where's my pen? Here we go. 45.444. Get in there. There we go. Five. Then we take the square root of that. It's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of six point something, right? Uh, take the square root. Forty-five point four four five zero four six. So we get 6.74. We'll call that 6.74 for C. Okay. Now, with this piece of information, now I know what this is, right? So if I, I can erase this, and I know that this value now is 6.74. Now, what does this tell us? If we're solving this triangle we're still missing these two angles, right? But now I have a complete sine ratio if I wanted to go to the law of sines, okay? So I can take this and I can go to the law of sines now and work on this problem.
All right. Um, if you wanted to, and just just because we can, let's uh, let's go about this a different way, and let's solve for angle A using the law of cosines. Okay. So before we do that, I just want to reiterate: you could do this, right? The sine of fifteen is six point seven four, which is equal to the sine, let's say, of angle A over twenty. Dot dot dot. We've done some work with law of sines. Perfectly fine to do this at this point. This isn't an ambiguous case problem anymore because we know what the three side lengths are. And there's only one triangle that can be formed with these three side lengths. So it's not an ambiguous case after this point. Okay, so we can solve this for A. But because we have the law of cosines and we need to be just as versatile with this, let's solve for angle A given the information that we have here. So remember we said that there's only place for one angle in the law of cosines, and it's right here at the end. So I can use the law of cosines to solve for A, okay, if on the other side here, I put side A. I know that side B is 15, and I just solved for side C. Now, in most cases, I wouldn't recommend doing this just because this is, is something that is an approximation, right? It's not going to be the exact right answer. If we went this route, we'd get the exact right answer for the value of A. Because I'm using a decimal approximation for this side length, it's not going to be perfect or, you know, exactly correct, but we're not NASA, so that's okay. Now, when you take a look at the way that this problem set up, okay, we have this, uh, we know this value now, this is 400. The variable is here. Right? So I've got to isolate this. This becomes a trigonometric equation, which we did some solving of back in chapter five. And recall, I can't solve for A until I've isolated the trigonom what we used to call the trigonometric package. Right? I've got to isolate this first, which means all these values are going to have to find their way over here. Uh, 15 squared is 225. This 6.74 squared, right? what is that? We just did this math. right? We took the square root of this to get C. So I already know that C squared is 45 point, and I'll approximate, right? 45.4445 minus, uh, I can't do this in my head, so I'll go to Desmos. Forgive me, I'm not that smart. So we have 2 times 15 times 6.74. We get 202.2. .2. So we come back here. We get 202.2 .2 times the cosine of A. Whoops, cosine of A. These values are going to get combined together, right? I can add these. So we get two, oops, 270, right? 270.445. And that's equal to this. Now, common mistake, pause here for a second common mistake for people is once they get to this point, okay, people like to subtract these numbers. It happens a lot. It happens more often than you think because you see these two numbers and you're like, oh, I'm going to subtract those now. You cannot subtract this from this because the cosine of A is attached to that, right? So speaking clearly, these are not like terms. This has a cosine A attached to it. This doesn't. So best I can do here is subtract this over to the other side. We're going to get 129.555, which is equal to negative 202.2 .2 times the cosine of A. Now, if I'm isolating this trigonometric package, I would have to divide by negative 202.2. .2 divide by negative 202. Point two. Okay, so our cosine of A is equal to 129.555 divided by negative 202.2. .2. So we get negative 0 0.67, which I'm going to jump ahead here. We're taking the inverse cosine of this value. 640.727. You get the idea. 129.8. So we get, right, this was, this was that negative 0 0.64. When we took the 
inverse cosine of both sides, we got A is approximately 129.8. Degrees, and then we can take this with the 15 degrees that we had for angle C and solve for B by adding these together and subtracting from 180. Right? If we add these together, we get 144.8, so B would have to be 35.2 degrees. So here's B, here's A. And there we have it. Okay, our solved triangle using the law of cosines.